So uh, we can improve the steve economy by preheating the feed, by steam compression, but we can also use the vapor produced to drive another evaporator, so have a multi-effect evaporator. And uh, how does that look like? Well, uh, here you have a multi-effect evaporator containing three uh, effects. And the effects are numbered along the flow path of the steam. Uh, so this is 1, 2 and 3 and the temperature here is T1, T2, T3 and we call the flows L1, V1 and so on. Now, how large will the pressures be here? P1, P2 and P3. The pressure on, on this side, the feed side of, uh, of uh, this evaporator. Uh, P2, the pressure on the feed side in evaporator 2 and P3 being the pressure in the feed side of the evaporator 3. And what will the relation between TS, T1, T2 and T3 be? Pause here and try to figure this out. Okay, in order to have a driving force Ts must be larger than T1. And T, this flow here, V1, has the temperature T1. And to have a driving force here, we have to have T1 larger than T2, and thus also T2 larger than T3. And, but the only way to get that, if we have this, the same basic stuff on both sides, if, if we have water uh, on the steam side, and then we have water being evaporated, the only way to have T1 larger than T2 is to have the P1 larger than P2. So the pressure P1 is larger than P2 and P2 is larger than P3. And indeed PS is larger than P1. And thus TS is larger than T1, which is larger than T2, which is larger than T3, which in turn is larger than the temperature in the condenser.